Hello and how are you? My name is Mahim Mbak and I will come you to our second session of creating a complete e-commerce, not e-commerce, a complete uh, inventory management system that you can use uh, in supermarket, that you can use in a school, that you can use in um, companies that handle different kind of stocks that you can use in so many scenarios and the system that you are creating is going to be a what a software as a service meaning that you'll create it only one time and you'll make it as your own product and then you can advertise it and get a lot of uh, and and get a lot of companies using it it is just one code you create it only one time and then just companies will you'll just be registering different companies different businesses and they use it just a single code so that is the structure that you're going to use or what we call software as a service and uh, the system that you're creating is going to have a mobile application and a web application or web dashboard and the web dashboard that you're going to have is going to be responsive even on the mobile app, on the mobile phone in a way that if you don't have a computer you can still use a mobile phone to manage your stocks so with that much said let's go straight into our today's business and resume from where we stopped at in the previous class it's going to be a hard journey so you should bring all your energy and motivation and and uh, mentality and perception and everything that you you need in order to watch and practice these videos up to the end but trust me if you don't give up at the end of the day at the end of this tutorial you'll see that things can now start making sense in your world of programming if you're a beginner if you're not a beginner and you're a pro you'll see or you'll learn a lot of techniques along the way so just know if you give up then you'll not learn anything so let's just be soldiers let's be let's be magi and work so hard to see that we reach up to the last video or up to the last lecture and we can and we do this uh what this uh but this this software regardless to the challenges that you're going to face and the burnouts and the boring all right let's resume from the previous lecture so in the previous lecture we said that we are going to create a what a laravel project so i had already opened this terminal okay this terminal here and i was teaching you a few things I was saying that we have some commands such as pwd pwd will tell your path we have another command called um, ls ls to list um the item that in your screen uh, on windows you have cls i think that cls or clear screen i think it is cls to clear the screen but on mac you just press ctrl k to there's the screen it will clear the screen i mean till it will clear the screen ctrl k then um then another thing that we're going to do now we're going to create a project but i say that before you create a project you have to first determine in which folder do you want to put it for me i'm going to put mine in the folder of github okay but in this github for this github folder it is inside desktop okay so i'm gonna i have to move from wherever i am I come, I enter into desktop and then I come to this GitHub and I put my project here using the command line. So I come to the command line, which is here. Okay. And then I, I, I list the item that are there. I see among the item that are there is the desktop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to navigate and go to this desktop. So to navigate this desktop, I just write CD and then say desktop and press the tab key to just finish the word. So you do like that cd desktop you may change directory to desktop <clears throat> and press enter then it will mean that you're now in what in desktop so right now if i write pwd that tells me the path where i am you'll see that the path that i mean it is a what it is a desktop you see users mark desktop that's where i am right now if i want to go back let's say that i want to go backwards you just write cd and then dash dash and then the back the forward slash this command will take you back so right now if i write pwd you see i'm on this what i'm in this time in i'm in this folder so let's go ahead and enter into desktop and then after entering to desktop and then we enter in this folder of what of uh, of github okay let's do that 
so to do that i'll just simply say cd desktop and then just cd the uh, let me just just done a mistake okay cd desktop like this and then write pwd you see are we no cd desktop yep cd desktop yes now we're in desktop uh -huh. now if you write pwd you'll see now we're in desktop so if you write ls now you're going to see the folders that are in desktop these are the folders that are in desktop i want to enter in this folder of github right so let me clear my screen i go ahead and say cd uh git and then press tab key it will finish the word github so now i'm in the folder of github now this is a place where i want to put my what my project so you have to determine like this and know where exactly you want to put your project before you start writing the commands that you don't understand okay so now i want to put my project here so my project that i'm going to create or the project that i'm going to create we're going to call it inventor track that is going to be the name of the project so i'm going to create a project called inventor track inventor track so let's go ahead and copy the command of laravel of composer of laravel that we use to create a new project it is here composer what and what composer create project laravel stroke laravel and then the name of the project so if i come here and i write 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 composer only composer you should be able to see these things so this is the only thing that will tell you that you have successfully installed composer okay so you should be able to run composer and then go to those kind of things that's the only confirmation that you can have that shows that you have composer oh my god what am i doing all right okay i want to move this guy here okay all right so okay so now for me i don't just copy the the, the commands i just put them in, in what in in the terminal sometimes these commands come with space and if they come with, I mean, with the, with the, with, the, with the space, they end up running things that you didn't really want to run. So what I'm going, to, what I do, I first copy the command wherever it is, and then I first paste it somewhere. So this is my Visual Studio Code, and this is a, just a new file, and then I'm, I paste there the command. You see, if I run this command, it would automatically create this project without me even allowing it to do that. So I first paste my command somewhere, either in some text editor or in something. Okay. So I modify the command the way I want it, and then I run it after I've seen that it is okay. So it is going to be composer, create project, Laravel, stock Laravel, and then here the name of the project. So the name of the project is going to be Invento, 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 Invento Pro. Invento Pro, no, Invento Track. That's going to be the name of our project. Invento Track. <laughs> I mean, let me think of the name i think that is okay invader track yeah you can also think of your own name you don't need to do everything that i do you can also think of uh, a name you can even come up with a name that is creative than mine okay let's see which name i chose it's called invader track for tracking the inventory okay so composer create project then inventor dash track that is the name of my project yes okay that's the name of the project you can even remove this and make it one word something like that inventor track inventor track oh you see i was going to even make a mistake okay inventor track so after making sure that you have the correct thing and the correct word then you're going to run this command okay so make sure that you're in the right folder as i've shown you so i'm in the right folder pwd this is the folder that we want to put the project so make sure that you're in the right folder so i'm going to go ahead and paste here inventor track okay so that's going to be the folder so they're going to create for me this folder so since it's going to be we're going to have a mobile app and a web app let's go ahead and put maybe web inventor track dash web so that we can be able to differentiate the web project and the mobile app project okay so I'm going to go ahead and run this command by pressing enter. So you have to make sure that everything is okay. 
before you press enter good press enter then it's going to process and download make sure that you're connected to internet by the way and download and install composer for us so this is going to take like a minute so let me pause the video as it is installing so for those who are in the video i'm going to resume the video after it has finished installing but i think i have good internet i see as if it is fast yes it has finished i have good internet so you see my project has successfully finished yes that is beautiful that is beautiful so to see that your project is really there go to the folder where you wanted to put your project here for example my folder is this one github so if i come here you'll see that i'll find my folder it is there beautiful it is here now composer uh, here inventor track so i mean that my project is now there that is so beautiful all right so after doing that what is the next thing that you're going to do the next thing we are going to, to put this project on github before we start even doing anything because i had i learned a, a very hard lesson uh when i lost my i lost my project that i was doing <laughs> i lost everything but i stole my computer and everything got lost even that project so it was a very big setback so every project that you do before you do anything make sure that you first put that project project on github and then proceed so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to put my project on github okay i'm going to put my project on github then we proceed so everything that i do the changes are saved and saved on github so in case anything happens to this computer still i'll have a backup of github and that is the best way that is the practice that you need to learn so i already have videos about basics of github i'll put the link in the description of this video of things that you need to know to get started with what with github so to get started with github of course if you you've don't you've never worked with github then you really really <laughs> you're really not a programmer <laughs> okay so you go ahead and create an account on github just search github.com after github.com go ahead and create an account after creating an account then go ahead go ahead and install what you call github github git they call it github or github whatever go ahead and search github for a github desktop and then you will see you will go ahead and install this this, this software you will download it if you're using windows you will install for windows if you're using mac you will install for mac and then install it after installing it you will have something like this like this something like this those others they use commands but for me i don't want to stress my life i use this interface so you'll have something like this you'll go ahead and click here and then come here come here to settings and then click here sign in and then you'll be able to account and then click on sign in then you'll be able to sign into your account okay so that is my github already there so to add your project on github or to publish your project on github what you do just come to the folder of your project <laughs> I want to have it on the same page. Okay. So open the folder of your project. This is the, the project. So go to the to your project. And then this is the name of my project. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Invento Pro. Invento Pro. This is the project. Okay. So I'm just going to drag and drop this project here. All right? Inventor Pro. So they'll tell me I'll drag it and I'll drag the folder of, of the project and drop it in this GitHub project. So they'll tell me that this project is not yet on my what? On my repository. And go ahead and say create the repository. And then they give me uh, the name of the project that I want to create. And then I can give it here um, the description. And then I put um, font visualizer, a readme or explanation of this. And then they ask me, okay, I think that's it. The font could also get ignore. 
this kit ignore it helps to ignore uh, things that you don't want to have so i can say if you not create for me git ignore for some reasons okay so after i go ahead so i keep it none I go ahead and say create repository so it will create for me the repository okay so this repository is still on local machine okay so i'll go ahead and say publish this repository so they ask me where do i want to publish it okay i say i want to publish on my account and i want it to have this name inventory management system is called inveto pro inveto track web okay so after doing that i'm going to go ahead and publish so they they can ask me if I want to add it to specific organization, the organization that I work with, I can go ahead and add to those ones. All right, so what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to keep it my code private. So if you want to keep your code private, you just say keep my code private, then it will not be public. So I'll go ahead and say publish repository. So it will process and then publish your repository. That is how you put your project on GitHub. It is not very hard. So if I want to view my project on GitHub, I just right click here and then say, view on github like that i'll be able to see my project on github so everyone in the world right now they can access my project that is beautiful okay it is beautiful all right uh so after doing that now what next is to run our project is to run our project is to run our project all right let's go ahead and run our project so to run our project i'm going to open this project and put in visual studio code Okay, I'm going to put it in Visual Studio Code, this particular folder. So I'll go ahead and close all the folders that I have in Visual Studio Code opened. Okay, this is my Visual Studio Code. So you can open your Visual Studio Code. I believe you know how to install Visual Studio Code. Okay, this is my Visual Studio Code. Yeah, a complete new Visual Studio Code window. So I'm going to open and add my project here. So to open, add your project, just simply come to File and say Open Folder. Okay. And then you come navigate to the folder where your project is. Mine is in desktop, GitHub, Inventor Track, which is this one here. So I double click on it and then I say open. So they'll open for me my project. So this is my what? My project. So I believe at this point you already know the basics of Laravel. But if it is your first time to interface with Laravel, I really recommend you to watch the previous the videos that I recommend you to watch. I'll put the links in the description of this video. It is good to have good grounds. I know some people just need to jump on things and start doing, but it is good to have the good foundation. So I don't need, I shouldn't explain so, so, so many things. So this is our, our Laravel project, okay? I don't need to explain like, okay, this is bad, this is that, okay? So now the next thing that we're going to do, I'm going to run this project. So we can be able to see what? We can be able to, 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 to start testing it. So to run the project, go ahead i'm going to go ahead i'm going to go ahead and do what i'm going to go ahead and open the terminal which is ctrl shift and the tilde or you can just simply come here to say uh terminal it is here just click on terminal and say new terminal or you can even see the shortcut ctrl shift and then the tilde that tilde is a is that car button that is under what is that is under escape so after doing this i'm going to go ahead and uh, run the, the what the um, the, uh, the command okay let's run the command so it's going to be php of, of running the project okay php php artisan serve like this so this is the project that's going to i mean that's the command that's going to run our project and press enter set it process boom so they say that our server has started on this port okay so there's another thing that's already running here so but this one has started in this port so press control and click on this port you should be able to see your project so that is the level that you can know that yes my project is working so if you do not reach this level please don't give up don't give up keep trying keep trying rewatch the video if these videos fail please try from uh, the other youtubers or other sources and and make sure that you least reach this level because this is not magic as you can see we have successfully run our project okay that is beautiful so don't give up please don't give up for god's sake this is possible it's not magic you can do it 
if this video is a fail watch it 10 times and try 10 times if 10 times fail watch from other youtubers and at least be able to make a, a project and reach this level and come back and resume that business okay so assume that we are all at this level so it means that now our project is up and running so i can collapse this what this terminal okay that's beautiful now the next that i'm going to do i'm going to connect our project with the database okay we're going to connect our project with the database so i'm going i've already started my zamp so if you're using windows make sure that you start your zamp so at this level i believe you already know what is meant by zamp if you don't know what meant by zamp please for god's sake i'm going to put the video for b for php developers i mean for php beginners watch those videos and just for your good and be able to understand what is meant by zamp so this is my zamp my map in windows in mac we use what you call map it is my map there um it's already started uh so make sure that you start your 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 database make sure that you start your database okay and after starting the database you should be able to access your php admin at this level you should be doing what is meant by php admin if you don't know php admin then you're in the wrong place okay. trust me you have to first go and learn the roots okay and i've already but if you already know the php admin then that is very good yeah you're ready you're good to go so i'll go to php admin after php admin we are going to create our project for our projects database okay so i'm going to create a project database it's going to be new and then i go ahead and add i go ahead and add the name of our database or the name of our project as the name i mean the name the database name as our name of our project so just simply click here new database and then this one's going to be inventor dash track eh? do they accept the dashes in the database i don't know let me use underscore to be on the safe side inventor track inventor track that is enough inventor track okay tracking the inventory so that is the name of our database say so go then go ahead and run your database so your database should do should be like this so this is our database okay and there are no folders there so after making sure that your database is there now the next thing you're going to connect this project with this database okay so to connect this project with database we'll go to our project where's our project this is our project okay and then we come here to dot inf file you'll find the, the file called dot inf okay so in this dot inf file in this dot inf file we are going to put the database information we'll come this section where there is database okay so the database is on this one something like this it is so these are the most important parts okay local database i mean data db 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 database okay that's the database so i'm going to put here inventor track the one that we just created now okay the username of the database is root so for those who are using uh, windows by default your your password is always nothing so you can leave it as it is here so but for me for mac i have to put root by default i have to put root okay so and mac mac users sometimes it uh, fails to to run until you add this line until you add this line this one where your php is so if you're using mac you may need to add this line here but for windows you don't need it eh? the socket so you redirect where your my sql dot soc folder is so that is when your project will run okay so this is how you connect with the database go ahead and put the database name put the root user and then put the password if you don't have the password you leave it as empty um okay so after doing that uh let's go ahead and now and now do what let's go ahead and now let's go ahead and migrate okay so migrate it means that now you're creating the tables that are necessary for the project to start working that's what made that is what made my migrate okay so after making sure that you've connected this one properly then you're going to migrate okay 
so we're going to open our terminal okay this is the terminal so don't close this terminal because it is the one that is having the what our project so we're going to open another terminal so to open another terminal call to shift and then the tilde or you can just simply come here and say new terminal then you'll have two terminals this one and this one so this was the one that you're going to be using to run commands and this is the one that is running our project right now okay now we are going to migrate okay migrate means that you're creating now the tables that are necessary for our project so let's go ahead and migrate so it's going to be php artisan migrate okay press enter beautiful you're supposed to get these green colors if you don't get these green colors please make sure that your database is well connected make sure that your database is running search those errors everywhere yeah and make sure that everything is running in green color like this because it's not magic others otherwise people just start getting these errors and they give up but please don't 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 dare give up don't give up okay all right that is beautiful so i can save so it means that that our project has been migrated successfully that is nice so if i come to our database and i try to refresh it okay you'll see that i have at least some tables there so that knows that everything is perfect at this moment okay so that's how you can know that okay now everything is all right okay so after doing that what next <laughs> what next we are going to do another magic we are going to install we are going to install we are going to install our core plugin okay <clears throat> our core plugin that we're going to use for this project to manage the, um, the interface and this plugin is called laravel admin if this is your first time to to hear about what you call laravel admin i recommend you to go to my youtube channel go to youtube and search learn it with muhindo okay after searching line with muhindo go ahead and click on my youtube channel click on playlist and then come here this one here laravel admin full dashboard tutorial open that playlist and then start watching it's beginning from video number one and up to the last video this will give you a very 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 great start of laravel admin it is amazing technology that you're going to use to create responsive websites or responsive dashboards so if you don't have any idea about laravel admin i recommend it is not necessary it's not a must 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 but i recommend please come and learn this so that you can have very good grounds of what you're going to do right now so laravel admin is a technology that is going to help us to uh, create the interfaces with simplicity without hard coding everything so everything you're going to see how it's going to be simple because you don't need to write the login page all that stuff you don't need to all right with that much say let's go ahead and install laravel admin and add that package into our laravel project so go ahead on youtube and i mean on google and search laravel dash admin so when you search laravel admin you'll see this search result with laravel dash admin laravel admin dot org okay so click on that link and then you'll see what is meant by laravel admin so this is the documentation laravel admin okay it is a package that's going to help us to speed up in uh, developing so we are going just to get started and the rest of things we'll do them as we do so in this documentation you can teach yourself a lot of things all right so let us install the laravel admin so to install laravel admin you run this command in your what in your Laravel project you can just like come here to get started installation and then you start okay so we're going to bring this command composer require this stuff okay we're going to run this command in our what in our project so let's go ahead and copy the command after copying the command we go back to our project and then open our terminal so this is the terminal okay then go ahead and learn and run the what the command of installing laravel admin that is the command and then press enter oh what is it what are they saying okay 
I think you need to run this command instead. This one, eh? So let's go ahead and run this command. Composer require that. Composer. So that is the command that you need to run. Then we run it. So it's going to take time, but not much time. Then it is going to install the magic in our project in a way that you're going to do uh, components with simplicity. Okay, installed. After installing Laravel admin, the next thing you have to run this command in order to create the what the configuration folder. So I'll copy the command and then come back to our terminal. I can clear the terminal and then run it. So you can see that there's a folder that has been created for migrations. So after creating the, the folder, then we, I mean after running this command successfully, then you go ahead and run this command step by step, step by step. You see? It's beautiful. We run that command. So it has installed successfully. That is nice. Aha, uh -huh. yeah, that's what you need. Yeah, so that is it. That is it. Ravel admin is there already installed. So if I come here to our database and then I try to refresh, I should be able to see that these more tables of Laravel admin that have been added to our projects. That is nice. So if you want to run learn more about Laravel admin, come to Laravel admin and and explore. <laughs> There's exploration here and learn or oh, watch my tutorial and learn. Okay, so now Laravel admin has been installed to our project. So if you want to make sure that to our test, if you want to see if Laravel admin has been installed to your project, you just come to your project endpoint and then put stroke admin. So if you put the stroke admin, you should be able to see that beautiful login screen. Okay, so that login screen confirms to you that you've successfully uh, installed Laravel admin. Now, now, now what? Now, if you want uh, your project or your, your what? If you want uh, someone to access your, your, your system without putting stroke, lar stroke Laravel admin, it's that you don't want this, pref this suffix of adding Laravel admin to your project. If you want just, I mean, or adding admin to your project, you want just like when someone comes here, they just go straight into the project. If you want that, what you do, you go to the configuration part of Laravel admin. So to go to the configuration part, you come here where there is app, and then you come to, no, 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 you come where there is config, and then you'll see the configuration folder called, I mean the configuration file called admin.php. This admin.php, it is where you can configure and make Laravel admin to have dynamic variables. For example, let us change a few things here. Let us begin with that very first thing. I want when someone comes to the project, to the learning project, I want someone to just straight access my project or the, the administrator. To do that, I'll just simply come here to where there is... We are going to set everything, but I'll just simply come here to where there is... Um, Where there is prefix you see where there is route route stroke prefix so you have to remove this admin if you want to so if you want your system to be having some something before someone accesses it or a stroke or a prefix you have to add it here okay so i remove that admin so that it should be having what it should be having a default prefix so if i come here and refresh I'll, after removing admin and then I'll come also to to the web route. So I come here to routes and then come to the web route and I remove this default route. I can comment it. Okay, let me comment it. Let me also remove this garbage. Okay, so I comment this route because the one that overrides that one. So if I do like this, then my project should be able to do what? To, yes, that's beautiful. So you see, if I come now to the project, I'm able to see Laravel admin there. That is beautiful. Okay, now let's say that we want to change instead of having this word Laravel admin, we want to have our own our own project name. So that's when you come back here to Laravel admin uh, configuration file. Uh, so instead of having this, so the project name is going to be inventor inventor sorry.
invent what invent a track okay invent a track okay so if i come and refresh here i'll see invent a track that is beautiful that's the name of our project okay so i can go ahead the short name i can go ahead and put here inventor admin if one that one to be like the logo of the project um the abbreviation i can say et inventor track okay the abbreviation ah other things i'm going to set them after we have logged in okay so those ones at least you can now see that we are taking now uh, progress without even much pain so don't give up please okay we are going to learn cool stuff so eh? so you can use this thing to do any kind of technology now we have the login screen without even coding okay now we need to log in now so to log in uh laravel admin comes with the default logins okay you just simply put admin and then say admin 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 yes i think it's admin admin so I click on login boom yeah you are admin admin you have your your project it has a menu it has everything it has users without even coding anything you see inventor admin you see that's beautiful okay we can see now the project is there and um, at least we can log in we can log out you can change your password all that that's the powerful the power of what of laravel admin so if you want to learn deeply into laravel admin please go and watch those videos that i've shown you so you see i can be able to modify even things here all right now let us begin with the configuration of the appearance and then after working with the appearance and then we will go ahead and now start doing the real stuff first of all now you can change this this skin okay this skin let's say that you want to use another color you can change this skin so if you want to change this skin you come here just simply search skin okay so these are the skins that are available we have the blue we have yellow so if you want the yellow skin just simply put here put here yellow so you have blue and light so blue and light will have this kind in form of light so if you put yellow alone you see you have that beautiful uh ui there okay so if you say blue yellow uh, blue and uh, red eh? you have even red you see blue and red skin red you'll have that red there it's beautiful isn't it you see it's beautiful have that ready there okay if you want another um, black even the skin of black is there you'll have that kind of black skin there okay it's beautiful black skin okay so let's say i want to go with red so i put that red and i refresh and then i have that one so if i want red light let's say that i want this one to be in a light mode this menu so just simply put red dash light you see with simplicity no pain no pain at all okay so we have that red light there you see now this 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 the the light what has had it has just made this sidebar to be what to be in a light mode so it is you to choose whether you want your things to be in form of dark mode or you want them to be in what in light mode okay so I hope you can see how things are beautiful and how we are making simply progress you see now for me if i want it to be in dark i can just simply put it instead of light light i just remove i just say skin red i refresh you have skin red and then you see here in vector track it is et and i explain that yeah. beautiful okay so the next thing that we're going to do you see when i refresh every time i refresh this skin collapses okay so I want it to be fixed. I don't want it to be collapsed every time. So to do that, I'll just simply come to here. You see where there is left. I just simply come here to put fixed. Let me just remove everything and I just put fixed. So if I do fixed, I hope, yes, you see everything is fixed. Like even if I refresh, my layout is fixed. Okay, so for those who have like a very big menu, for those who have very big menu, they always need 
to search here within the menu but for me i don't need this search i want just my dashboard because my menu is not going to be big so if you don't want that search in menu just simply search where there is search and then here enable enable menu search and make it what make it false so in say enable menu search and make it false boom you see it's now having that yeah that's beautiful that is beautiful okay so here we are good to start we are good to start okay now let us start uh, creating our project okay let's start creating a project first of all we begin with the roles okay which kind of users you're going to have in the system um me i thought that we're going to get we're going to need uh, three users the first user is going to be the first user is going to be uh the super administrator you the owner of the project you who will be registering the what who you will be registering the other companies other users something like that okay so let us begin by creating what the super admin okay and uh, let's begin by doing that okay so i mean let's begin by creating the super admin role okay then if the other role that we shall need we shall need another role of the company owner remember each company Will have its own admin as i told that the system we're going to do we're going to have a system that will support multiple companies so we're going to create another role of company owner then after company owner the company will have workers so after the role of company owner will have another role called um, workers or employees okay company employees so when the user when the company creates a, a user they'll be having what company employees for them I think those are the roles that we need for now then maybe when we expand the system in future you can put accountants what 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 administrators etc something like that all right so with that much said let's go ahead and create those just three roles let's make sure that you have those three roles so come here to admin okay and then come to roles as ah, so you can see here we have already uh what we have already um uh, our roles table and we have at least one role there so i'm going to edit this role and i change it to admin i don't like this long word this slug okay let me just make it admin so that i should be able to to abbreviate it not to uh, to, to write this long word every time because this is the word that we shall be using to reference the administrator account so i'll come here and say edit and then i just change this one from administrator i'm just going to be admin so this is going to be a super admin this first role it is going to be for the super admin for us the system owners okay now after doing that we're going to create now uh, another another role uh, the, for what for 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 the company owners so click on new and then come here the slug so this slug i can call it company or company admin but this is too wide too big word i mean it's a too long word it's a big word let me just call it company so this slug should be a simple unique word that we should be using that we shall be referencing to to do what to to encode to reference to this to this particular role so the name is going can be anything so it's going to be company 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 own okay so this is going to be now the company owner's role okay can give them all permissions just click on all permissions then i say submit then you have that company owner that we shall be referencing as company so these slugs take care of them make sure that you know them because they're going to be very important another thing that we're going to create you're going to create now another role for for what for for the employee okay so we can call them worker i just want a simple word <laughs> that will not going to cause me trouble so in the word they can call them employee <laughs> or it has to be consistent to call them workers okay company workers company worker company worker and then more permissions maybe and then submit so those are the three roles that you're going to need basically for the system for the beginners for the starters when we grow when uh, the system becomes complex we can see how we add multiple roles but for now we need these three okay 
Okay, so that's okay. Now, the next thing that we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and uh, now start creating the what? The components or the database or the, the, the components of our system. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, 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 okay. So to begin, I'm going to begin by adding the the what the let's go to to our PDF first. So that should guide us. Okay. Oh my God. This is a PDF of uh, of our system. So the users already already have a user table since it's a parent table. Let me close this guy. But for you, you need to run to read those documentation. So the users at least already have the users there. Okay, the admin users. Okay. Okay, so the users are already there. Um, what's the next thing? Um, the users are already there. The next thing is uh, my users are already there. Uh -huh. What else? Now the company, we have to create now the company because after the user is the company. So let's go ahead and create the company model. Okay, the company model. All right, so um, how do you create model? So I'm going to create a new file where I'm going to be saving my important commands. Eh? I'm going to create a, a file where I'll be saving my important commands. So I'll come here and say new and then say, important commands is it double m or single m i don't know it's double m i don't know doesn't matter the txt okay so me i'll be putting here some some of the important commands that i don't need to repeat myself again and again and again and again so like creating a model i've never even memorized it so, <laughs> you can just do like a print create laravel laravel model command okay so this is the command this is a command it is php artisan make then colon model okay uh now this is the mode that you're going to create okay now this model the first model that we want to use we want to create right now as we have agreed we're going to create a company model okay so we're going to say command and then you say camp. So here, instead of put a drink, you're going to put company. Okay. So this company is going to be our what? Our first model. So if you want to make the migration alongside the, car, the, the model, go ahead and put dash M. Okay. So by doing like this, by doing like this, you're going to make the model at the same time, the migration that will help you on the nomenclature. And also always remember you don't create in cut in, in multiple i mean in in what in plural just use singular singularity then laravel will be able to take care of the relationships all right so that's our first command i'll save it so that next time i want it i should not come and lose i should go and should not search for it anyway all right so i'll go ahead and copy the command and then i open our terminal i clear my screen so we have two terminals here. One for the P for the PHP artisan that is running. Another one is for the running the terminals. I mean the commands. So let's go ahead and create our first command. So I'll copy this command. It's going to be company, and then I copy it. I'll go ahead and run it. So when I run it, if you can see my my model has been created successfully. At the same time, uh, my 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 migration has been created. So you have two things that have been created. So if you come here to up model, oh, to models here, you can see we have a company model here. So they created. Uh -huh. If you come here to to what to uh, if you come here to database uh, migration, you can see this is the last migration. It has been created the migration for companies so our task is just going to add multiple columns or the column that you're going to need there good all right so let's first think which columns let me first comment here which columns do we need in a company okay so we need a company name when you're registering company uh, we shall need their email we shall need their logo 
yeah we shall need their logo we shall need company logo uh -huh. we shall need their website we shall need the um, their details or their about us what else shall we need to know to record about the company you shall need their name you shall need their email you shall need their logo you shall need their website we shall need where their their status i mean status to tell whether they are active or not so we should be able to block a company or activate it uh -huh. we shall need their address we shall need their phone number phone number one i mean phone number we shall need their phone number there are two phone numbers one and two uh -huh. what else shall we need we shall need their p.o box your box what else shall you need about the company we shall need their color their branding color what else shall you need about the company we shall need their their okay i think these are enough for the company maybe we shall need also maybe their slogan something like that all right i think i think these are enough don't you think i think that's these are enough to know about the company then each company must be linked to a what to a user each company must be linked to the user so we may put here owner company owner id we can put maybe owner id because each company must have a what an administrator so this is very important in fact it's what we should begin with okay so now let's go ahead and do that so come here to the migration and then start adding so i'm going to put um foreign for uh, foreign id for and then i put here um, administrator uh, no. okay this can confuse you okay let me for the beginning let me just keep this one simple since we know our id is an integer so i'm going to be begin by putting here there is id of company owner okay and then make it not nullable so it means that i cannot create a company without an owner you can make it nullable okay okay let me just make it not nullable all right so that's our first so the next thing you're going to need a company name so since the company can have a long name so let's make it as text okay so it should also be required so it should not be nullable okay the next thing you're going to need a company email so this can be nullable so attach and put nullable okay so after putting the email the next thing you're going to need a company logo so it's going to be a text because it can be a link and you don't know how limit how long the link can be the next thing you're going to need you're going to need a company website you're going to need a company about okay you're going to need a company status so it can be s string okay so this will be like active or not active so here in case you want to block a company maybe their, their license has expired uh we can do like that you can limit from there maybe you can also put maybe license expiry license maybe this one can be date date and then put um license expiry we can put expiry license license expiry date all right so here it will help us to know when the license of a company is expiring yeah so we should be able to block a company when their license has expired okay All right so that is it another thing we shall need the company address yes another thing we shall need the company phone number let me put here phone number phone number one okay let's put phone number and then maybe phone number two some companies have two phone numbers we shall need a PO box. Okay. Another thing we shall need their color, the color of the company. Another thing we shall need the slogan of the company. I maybe their Facebook link and their Twitter link. Those are enough. 
that's enough information that you shall need about the company okay that is enough information that you shall need about the company isn't it it is enough so all right this is the information that we shall be recording about the company okay this is the information that we shall be recording about the what about the company all right company owner let me make it nullable because when you're creating a company at first you don't have the owner sometime all right so yeah that's it that is it that is it let me not make it nullable let me make it compulsory all right so that's it that's it let's go ahead and run migration so after having the table of, my, of companies then you're going to run to migrate this table okay so to migrate it we shall open our company i mean our table so the migrate command i, I can also write it here <laughs> but for it at least i know it in the head it is php addison migrate migrate so that is the command that you use to migrate the table so migrate it means that you're creating now this table to become into our what into our database let's go ahead and migrate it php addison migrate boom refresh yeah it has been migrated right now if you go to your database to a php admin database i mean sorry if you refresh here you'll be able to see that we have now a company table companies which is here with the all the columns that we wanted to be there that is beautiful all right so i want us to first finish dealing with the company before we come other things here at least if you manage to finish this management part then these are the things we are going to follow all right so now we have the model we have the company now we need to see how can we put the company on this menu so we can be able to start registering a company that's what we're going to do right now okay so to do that to do that to do that we're going to go ahead we're going to go ahead and add a column here so we're going to do uh, a controller. So a controller is a file that we shall use to control a specific model, the table and the rest. That's what we call a controller. So to get a PHP admin, PHP, I mean, sorry, Laravel admin, they have a terminal. I mean, they have uh, come here to get started and then come here to quick start and then you'll get this function here for creating a controller so this is this is a controller it is going to be a file that we are going to be using to uh, to do what to manage a specific model so you just simply write php artisan admin make and then you write the name of the con the, the model that you want to manage and then you add the word controller and then you write the mode that you want to manage. So we want to create a, a controller for the company. So I'll come here and copy this word company. And then I make sure I remove this word user. Okay. So I put here company. And then I remove this word user and I put here company. So it's going to reference this word, this company controller. So I mean this company model. Okay. Sometime in Windows, you may need one slash others you may need double slash so if it fails skills to do that you can try to remove one slash something like that so this is how you create a controller make sure that the name here is the same one here and the same one last year so i'm going to copy this terminal i mean this command and i run it in the terminal open clear screen run it press enter model does not exist i think for me for mac users i need one slash so for php users you'll need double slashes for mac users one slash is enough I think let's see uh there is a supermarket that they want to use your system okay now you want to register them so you have to register them as a company so that's what you're going to do in the next lecture how do you register a company how do you register their administrator how do you create for them the password so that's what you're going to do in the next lecture so let me make sure that i commit my changes always make sure that you commit your changes okay put your commit i mean i can commit from here and then go ahead and do it and uh, push to online 
So I'll not push because, okay, let me push because it is still private, okay? So in the next lecture, that's what you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and learn more interesting things. This lecture, of course, has to be boring because there's no lot of practical things. But once you pass this level, you're going to see the rest things are going to be very, very interesting and easy. All right, that's it for today. Let's meet tomorrow. We're going to proceed from there. Unless there is a question. Let me see if you guys are still there. Is there anyone who has a question?